a little bit about the crown. Friday night, at Good Friday, we covered the cruelty of the crown and how that Jesus suffered agony, mental anguish beyond anything that we could ever, ever understand. Not only with those long thorns being shoved in and pierced to his head, but he had all the thoughts knowing, I'm about to, as God, carry the whole weight of the world on me. I'm going to fix and, and cure all sin, but I'm also going to heal all diseases. He said in Isaiah 53, 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And by his stripes, we are healed from COVID-19, COVID-22, COVID-35. Doesn't matter what it is. It didn't take God by surprise. So the cruelty of the crown was is he had to wear that and be separated from God and literally physically die. We know a little bit about mental anguish because this time last year, we were all locked down at home. No Good Friday, no Easter. Everybody was worried they were going to die with no toilet paper. Can I get an amen? <laughs> and so there was this thing thinking about continuously, what's going to happen? We're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to find out on the news tonight what the president says about if we're going to die. And then the worst for girls that had lip injections, you, you had to wear a mask <laughs> for a year. No duck lips with those things on, right? So we were continuously remembering and reminding ourselves of how bad it really, really was. Well, we identify a little bit where we could never side with God when, when man divorced himself in the Garden of Eden from the divinity of God. Satan separated man from his source and the exposure to sin brought in a communicable disease and infiltrated the bloodstream of all mankind. But then there was a plan. The second Adam, Jesus, who came, put on our suit. God, he's in heaven, the Trinity, God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes down, overshadows Mary, so Jesus can put on an earth suit, so he can live a spotless, sin-free life for 33 years, so he could pierce his head, pierce his side, so we could be free. In other words, we owed a debt we could not pay. Jesus paid a debt. He didn't owe, and not only did he pay it, he was a massive overpayment for that sin. Come on, go ahead, give God praise today. Massive overpayment. I want us to go to John 19, verse 1. It says, then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. The soldiers twisted together that crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed in him a, a purple robe. And they came to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him with their hands. And Pilate went out again and said, I'm bringing him out to you, but we can't find any guilt in him. And Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns. And what I really want to convey to you today in 2021, because at the end of this year, I want you to look back and say, in 21, I won. I won over defeat. I won over fear. I won over the addiction. I, I won over the depression. I won over the suicide. I won over the lack. And one of the ways that we ensure that is we realize is that Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns so we could wear the royal crown of righteousness, or we could just break it down and say rightness. So now when God, who can't see sin because he's God, he does not look through the lens of our sin because we were all great sinners. Raise your hand if you were an awesome sinner. A lot of you are still working on it. You're lying. Let's try it one more time. I mean, and the devil cried when we got saved, right? Like, we lost a good man today. But Jesus came and justified us just as if we never, so now that we could actually wear that royal account of righteousness knowing we didn't do right, we don't deserve right, but since Jesus wore the crown of thorns, we can wear the royal crown of righteousness, and now as he is, so are we in this world. He is not bound, he is not defeated, he is not depressed, so therefore we should not be in this world. Not when we get to heaven, right now, right here in the divided states of America. Give God praise today. But, 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 but you'll never put on the royal crown of righteousness if you think that you're no good, you're unworthy, and you're bad. 
Now, my daughter, who was on that video, you turned me off way, way down. Uh, my daughter, who was on that video a moment ago, um, she has not a lot of daddy issues because she's very spoiled. I waited till I was, old, I was so old to have her, we were looking for a kinder care for her and a nursing home for me. So she never had a lot of insecurities because I told her, you're blessed, you're anointed, you're talented, you're qualified. So she just walks around thinking she's all that. And if you don't think she is, she'll say, go ask my dad. He'll tell you. Me and Nicole, we were in um, Florida at our church down there the other day. And one of the doctors here in St. Louis at Christmas time gave us a gift card to Starbucks. I didn't even know they made them this big for $500. I thought I would have Starbucks the rest of my life. And we were in line at Starbucks, and Nicole looks at me, and she says, hey, have you been using this card a lot? And I said, no, I don't don't use it at all. She said, we're down to $28. (laughs) I said, how could that be? And then she said, it's your daughter. (laughs) Now, when she's singing, it's her daughter. When she's awesome, it's her daughter. When she's drained the credit card, it's my daughter. (laughs) Then she says to me, she says, what are you going to do about it? You need to call her and tell her to stop that. Maybe we should change the passcode. And I said, hey, we're down to almost 20 bucks. Why talk about it now? (laughs) Because I don't want to bring it up. Because I'm her father and I'll leave it alone. I'm here to tell you that Jesus did way more for you than pay a $500 gift card. Now, he has paid the big debt. So he wants you to say, swipe it all you want. Enjoy your life. Be blessed. Be favored. Be anointed. Somebody ought to get excited about this. Your dad loves you. Your biological father might not have loved you, but you have a God in heaven who loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. So you and I did not have to go to bed at night worried about our own security, but we could put on the royal crown of righteousness. We're right. Why? Because dad said so. We're loved. Why? Because dad said so. Revelations 14, verse 14, they'll put it on the screen and online as well. It says, then I looked and behold, a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like the son of man with a golden crown. Shout it with me, a golden crown, write it it in in, in, in the chat, a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. This is a quote from the apostle John who is now stranded on the Isle of Patmos And the Lord opens his eyes and he can see the last days. He started talking about a lot of the things that we see right now. In fact, the Bible's so up to date that we haven't even caught up with it yet. And he said, I see one coming on a white cloud with a golden crown upon his head. And he's seated. He's not not working. He's not laboring. He's seated on on, on this cloud. Then later we go on to read that it says that he's coming back and he's going to split the eastern sky and the last trumpet would sound and then Jesus would come in riding on a white stallion with a bloody vest that says faithful and true and there would be a sword of the spirit coming out of his his mouth and it says that the whole world would see it. When I was growing up, my grandmother would tell me that story and I'd be like, how in the world would the whole world see it? Because we didn't know anything about iPhones. We had telephones with cords. Anybody know what I'm talking about right now? We had cords and really long cords. And if you didn't want your mom to hear what you were saying to the girl, you had to try to tie it up and get around and go down here. And then if you had a lot of money, you had a, 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 a phone with a, it was cordless phone, but it had an antenna that was 90 feet long. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. And then you broke it. Blame it on your sister. But we didn't know about an iPhone. But it won't be very long at all till the whole world will see it because of the technology that's in place today. It won't be long till Jesus splits that eastern sky and Fox News will see it. CNN will see it. Newsmax will see it. And the first dude that captures it on TikTok is going to have a load of likes because God, Jesus, Emmanuel is coming back for a glorious, spotless church. Not a broke church, not a disgusted church, but a fired up church full of faith and victory. Not victims, but victory. Give me praise today. I'm talking about Jesus. He's coming back. A lot of times people put it off to heaven when you're growing up. How many of y'all grew up in church? Raise your hand if you grew up in church. And uh, when you grew up in church, let me try that one more time. How many of y'all grew up in church? And so they were always singing a song about heaven, right? It's like, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. 
or was it oh, when the saints go marching in? It was like we have to really suffer here, and when we get to heaven, it'll be good. God does not want us suffering here. He wants us to say, as he is, so are we in this world. So in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of COVID, in the midst of a debilitating disease, in the midst of a country that is being torn apart by division, I want us, the church, faith church, globally, around the world, to stand up and say, as for me and ha my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. We're not going with the world, we're going with the word. We're going with God, make him turn me up. Come on, give God praise today, go deal with it. Come on, give him praise. Second Timothy four verse eight, thank you, Marcos. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only me, but also all who, I love this next word, look at it. It says, who have loved his appearing. Love. I want to talk about love language for a minute. If you're not familiar with love languages, some people are physical touch, some people are quality time. My wife happens to be acts of service, which is a bummer for me because it's a lot of work. <laughs> she's like, she just loves it. Like, oh, you vacuumed. Oh, you did the laundry. It's like, my gosh, it just wears me out. <laughs> I'm words of affirmation. So all she's got to say is, good boy, good boy, good boy. <laughs> and then physical touch after 10 o'clock. Doesn't matter which 10 or two of them. But Nicole, Nicole, she, she, at our house, at our church in Florida, she has this tea maker and she, uh, she's always trying to explain to me how to make tea because she wants me to make tea. I do not want to make tea. I, I'm not interested in making tea. It takes too long. But for her, she really wanted me to make tea. She keeps teaching me. So a couple of weeks ago, I just felt either by the Holy Spirit or my own spirit. It was like, you know, do that for her. She really wants you to do it. So I, I got up and I made the tea and she came downstairs and she was shocked. She's like, oh my gosh, you made me tea. And you could see her love tank like, oh, she got so excited. She just grabbed me and hugged me. And I'm like, oh, this works. <laughs> Why? Because that's her love language. And of course, as you know, our Starbucks card's almost empty. <laughs> so what we have to do is to speak the love language of God. What's his love language? He said, forsake not the assemblings of yourself together. When the evil day approaches, raise your hand, even in the chat, if you think it's here right now. As the evil day approaches, do it all the more. In other words, make God a priority. Make his house a priority because things go better with God. You take God out of the equation, it's what they did in schools. They took God out of school, look what happened. They took God out of the government, look what happened. They have to fence themselves in with razor wire because man cannot fix man and government cannot fix government. We don't need big government, we need a big God. Come on, somebody ought to give God praise today. Say amen to this, share it, like it. We need a big God. Everybody shout, we, gotta, we need a big God. So we need to prioritize, speak God's love language. So what's God's love language? He said, the Sabbath is holy. So one day a week, wouldn't even matter what day. We're not under the law, we're under grace. But one day a week, maybe it's Monday for you. Maybe, but for the most part, if it's not online, our church is Saturdays and Sunday. So you say, hey, I'm going to prioritize Jesus in his house. He said, I don't have time to do that. I want to talk right now about some chicken that God made that I actually think that God actually used this recipe when he was dropping manna out of the sky. It's called Chick-fil-A. Come on, just raise your hands. Thank you, Lord, for Chick-fil-A. God, we thank you right now for Chick-fil-A sauce. God, thank you for that they put that honey on the breakfast biscuit. God, we also do not forget, God. Oh, we do not forget about the lemonade. Come on, somebody ought to shout it. Even Kanye said, oh! But Chick-fil-A be making more money six days a week. No offense on Popeyes, because they really got something going on. 
But Popeyes can't seem to make it, and they got to stay open seven days a week, and there's never a line. E even KFC, they got the secret hidden recipe and finger licking good, but they still cannot make the kind of money because Chick fil A said, hey, one day a week is going to belong to God. Six days we work, one day, come on, somebody, it's God. And they're lined up around the corner, and they're making billions of dollars. What makes you think that you can open your doors on Sunday? It is God's day. Say no to whatever it is because one day belongs to God. Give it praise in the house. Come on, I'll give you 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Somebody ought to shout amen. Somebody ought to share, 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 share. Second Timothy 4, 8, one more time. Henceforth is laid up for me, not for somebody else, for me, a crown of righteousness. And on that day, it will be awarded back unto me. We have a big job to do. As we wrap this up, God's bigger than the devil. God's not intimidated by the devil. God never wakes up and says, uh-oh, didn't see that coming. Trust me when I tell you that God has got the whole world in his hand. And none of this took God by surprise. And yes, it was a surprise to a lot of us. And a lot of people dealt with it in different ways. I think if any of us could go back, there's things we learned, things we liked how we handle it, things we didn't like the way we handle it. But the fact is, that's behind us now. And thank God, 2020 never has to happen again. In 2021, it's your year to look back and say, I won. And I'm taking my life back. I'm taking my mind back. I'm taking my dreams back. I'm taking my hope back. I'm taking my God back. I'm taking my church back. And I'm taking my crown back because he has crowned me with righteousness and no more torture in my soul. Oh, we're having some Easter up in here today. Come on, somebody. We took Easter back. This is the year we took Easter back. So let's think about this. How many people online here know people that are far from Jesus that really need some hope right now? People are so, like, maxed out. They get so rock, so easy, so quick. Like, people just want to shoot you because you, you thought different than them. Like, why'd you shoot them? Uh, I don't even know why. Because there's a demon, and it's a demon of division. And really, it's hopelessness. And there is no hope outside of Jesus. And I want everybody at all of our campuses today... To understand that Jesus is not a way, he's the way. He's the only way. And we need more Jesus in our life. We need more Jesus in our schools. We took him out, we can't even have school. Unfortunately, kids are going to spell like me. I was homeschooled. It ain't pretty. Spell check's like, I don't even know what you're trying to do here. I'm the poster child for that's not a good idea. But at Faith Church, we ought to look a little different, smile, laugh. Today I took a walk and I was just walking at our house in Sunset Hills and I saw these cardinal birds and I saw these ducks and geese and I was walking around going, man, look at all this stuff, God. I could see these flowers, guys, for real, like flowers pop out of trees. Trees turn, there's like these white flowers. And I'm like, how did you do that? In a few weeks, they're going to be green. And then in the fall, they're going to turn this really pretty color. They're going to fall away to the ground. And then all of a sudden, God does it again. It's the winter, spring, summer, or fall. God did all that. When you leave today, I want you to look and stop and take a picture of the flower. Take a picture of life. And then also take a picture of your fellow man and realize even when people are yelling at me or screaming at me, there's a whole lot of people like me. But there's a whole lot of people that don't like me. And the don't likes seem to share more than the likes. <laughs> but I can't live my life thinking that people are bad, so I'm, I wonder who's going to be bad, so I walk around with a frown. I over-smile. I, I went to a restaurant last night, and I was still in church mode. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? And people are like, dude, you're way too friendly. What are you trying to sell? I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm like, in church mode. 
But church mode for me is all the time. I, I've never seen a person that I don't want to talk to. I've never seen a person that I don't want to reach. And I'm telling you, we got to go back to work. And we got to go back to church with those people from work and tell them, come. I mean, you wouldn't believe what's happening. You should see the video. Somebody shout amen. You should see Jesus on the cross. Like, my church is the coolest church in the world. Because you know what people need? They don't need another Republican. They don't need another Democrat. They need Jesus. Jesus in the White House. Jesus in the crack house. Jesus in the ad house. I'm here to tell you today, Jesus is who you ought to vote for because he's the only one that died for you, suffered for you, and brought you into a kingdom that knows no shame. Come on, give him praise today before we go. I always like at this point to wait till everybody sits down to ask them to stand back up. I want them to complete their squat. I have a couple questions, and I, I like looking at this camera because I can't even look at all campuses, including you here. How many of y'all would say today, Pastor David, I, I, I felt joy and hope going back in my soul that God's in charge. How many would say it felt good to be in the literal house of God today with your brothers and sisters in Christ? It feels good. I got texts from Dr. Hope in Florida and Jim Edmonds and athletes around the world who are watching this program, it's their church. They really don't even say watch. They say, I worship today because church is real. Every head bowed, every eye closed here and even at home, sitting in Sudan, sitting in Palestine, sitting, sitting in Italy, all over the world. I want to pray for you as your pastor. God, I pray right now for every man, every woman, every boy and every girl who they're heart has been heavy and they've, they've worn this uh, thing around their mind that's just like a crown of thorns and I thank you that today is the day that the assignment of the evil one is broken over the life and they will be free for we cast all our cares upon you for you care for us and God I speak blessing on them favor on them anointing on them receive that right now and never again will you go back to those evil thoughts those suicidal tendencies. What's wrong with me? You're gonna change and say, what's right with me? That God loved me so much that he would have died just for me. And because of that, we're gonna keep swiping the card because our dad never runs out of funding at Starbucks, never runs out on us or gives up on us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And everyone said, amen. Give the Lord a hand for being such a loving savior.